Hello everyone, I'm Jessica and today is going to be my wrap up for March. In the month of March, I managed to read seven books. I also started four books that I decided to DNF, so those will be in here as well. I will be starting with my DNFs and going up in rating scale, so I will end with my higher rated books. As always, all of the links for my reviews on Goodreads will be in the description box below, so make sure you check that out if you're interested in hearing more of my thoughts. My first DNF of the month was Breaking a Zelda by Tabitha Shipley. I was provided a copy of this book by the author, and I feel really bad about not finishing it, but it just was not working for me. I read the first 50 pages, and while I can see why some people are rating this book very high, for me it just had too many issues with the world building that kept me from being able to immerse myself in the story. So it just never really developed itself in a way that made me want to continue reading. I did not plan to pick this one up again, so it will be a complete DNF. Next is the one that hurts me the most, And I Darken by Kirsten White. I DNF'd this at 200 pages. I have no idea what happened with this. I came off of the high of Slayer and I was so sure that I would love this book. I over the years have studied Wallachia as well as the Dynasty and Dracula Shi lines, especially Vlad the Impaler, and it's just a gender swap Vlad the Impaler, so you would think that I would absolutely love this. But for me, I think a large part of it was because so much of what happened, like all of the action kind of happened off the page, and you were just kind of told that a battle happened, or told that a war happened, or told that a seizing took place. You didn't really get to see any of it. And the story starts out with the main character being born, and shows bits and pieces of her life over the years, and, you know, it would jump five, it would, you know, tell you four or five paragraphs of her as a three-year-old and then would skip five years. And then you'd get six chapters on her being eight and it just, I guess they don't like that type of story? I don't know. I may pick this up again in the future. It's not, it, it is a DNF because I DNF'd it at 200 pages, but I don't know. Tell me down below if you think that this book is worth finishing. Um, I had a few people tell me that I should try to finish it and I tried. That was when I was at like 100 pages. I tried another 100. I don't know. Like, what is it about this book that makes you love it? Because I struggled. The next is another one that pains me. It is Robert Michaels' The Demon in the Trees by Ben Sanders. Uh, ben is a fellow author tuber. I really like his channel. I read about the first 30 or 40 pages of this and then read like the last 30 or 40 pages. I didn't like the dialogue. I felt like the dialogue was too clunky and in that first 30 pages, I had a pretty good idea of who the killer was and why they were the killer. And that was why I read the last bit of the book and I was correct. There were some things in here that I did like though. And I know that um, Ben has been growing as a writer because again, I follow his YouTube channel. So if he publishes another book, I would be willing to give that a try. Because again, um, with And I Darken, I absolutely loved Slayer and DNF'd And I Darken. So obviously it's not an author that I don't like. It's just that particular book. So, and the last DNF for the month of March was The Girl Who Drank the Moon by Kelly Barnhill. I DNF'd this at 47%. I was reading this for the Buzzwordathon. It took me like the entire week to realize that it wasn't me, it was this book. Much like And I Darken, this book has everything in it that I thought I would love. And just like And I Darken, the plot followed the same type of formula, where you get bits and pieces of the main character's life as they grow up. And in this book, it changes main character, like the characters are also changing. So it's several different characters at several different points in their life, and it just doesn't work for me and I know that about myself now. I didn't know that before now but now I do. So of those four books I may one day pick up And I Darken again but I don't know for sure. Probably not but but maybe. Those are probably some of the first DNFs you've ever seen on this channel. It's been over two years and I don't typically DNF books and I DNF'd four this month and I just I'm not sure what's happening and at first I thought maybe it was just me but I read some books this month that I really enjoyed, so it's not just me. I had zero one-star reviews this month, but I did have a two-star review, and that is going to be Fifth Wave by Rick Yancey. 
This book is a post-apocalyptic story about aliens and the invasion of the planet Earth. It follows the main character Cassie who is trying to find her brother and keep a promise to him and just follows her tale of trying to find her brother. I gave this a 2.25 out of 5 stars. I did watch the movie before I read the book so there wasn't like a lot of surprise for me but also there were some things in this book that I really had some problems with. Cassie was an okay character but not my favorite. Really the only character that I really super liked was Zombie and again I knew who Zombie was from the beginning because I have seen the movie so I didn't have like that surprise of figuring out who Zombie was as I went on which is one thing about the book that really bothered me. The seeing different people's perspectives and not knowing who they were. I didn't like that aspect of it. I did like the alien takeover part like how much thought was put into what they could do to take over and how much it would affect the human populace and what steps the human populace would take if they were being taken over. I just said take like 300 times but you guys are used to that by now. For me in this book the main love interest was a fucking creeper who didn't understand the word no. This book was written by a man who has questionable ideas of what the word no means. And that is why this book rated so lowly for me, among other reasons. But really the icing on the cake was the scene with Cassie and the main love interest. And basically she's giving off all the no vibes and even tells him no. Like he asks if he can kiss her and she says no. And in her mind she thinks, if this guy kisses me, I'm going to murder him. And yet he kisses her and it's like her whole idea changes suddenly it's totally fine for him to be kissing her because his hands are on her and it makes her feel so great and she just she loves having him kissing her. This is a book written by a man who obviously has a main character who not only says no where you know maybe the guy maybe she's playing hard to get no she also thinks no. She thinks no and says no and yet the moment this love interest puts his magical lips on hers, her entire idea changes. It becomes a yes. Because his lips have fucking magic in them, apparently. And for that reason, I am probably not going to continue this series. I already own them, so I may read them. But it's definitely not a priority. It's definitely not on my radar. I have interest in figuring out like how the humans win in the end because you know they will but just that made me dislike this so much. So yeah, that's, that's my rant for the day. On to the next book. I had zero three star books so we're on to the four stars which is weird because this is technically rated 3.75 but it's a four star on Goodreads. It's Goodreads. It's they ruined my ratings. Okay. The Lies We Told by Camilla Way. This is a mystery about a woman whose boyfriend goes missing and basically he had a sister who went missing 20 years prior and it involves this main character trying to figure out if the two disappearances are connected and if they are, how. Like I said, I rated this a 3.75 out of 5 stars. I liked the mystery aspect of this. I don't read a lot of mystery. I have been reading more this year, but it's not really my typical genre. I liked the darkness, the creep factor, the look into what the human mind is capable of doing because the human mind can be fucked up. I did not find this plot very predictable. I really enjoyed the story and if you like mysteries I highly recommend it. And the next book is Stars Above by Marissa Meyer. This is a collection of short stories from the Lunar Chronicles series. I gave this a four out of five stars. I think this is a decent collection. There are some stories in here that I could have lived without but I did really enjoy the first story that was a view of Scarlett's grandmother and the end story which is actually an epilogue to Winter. There were some other in here that were really interesting as well, especially the viewpoint of Cinder and Kai's first meeting from Kai's point of view. Then we have Song of the Dryad by Natalia Lee. This book is about a girl whose name is Charlotte and when she was a little girl she used to be able to see fairies in and around her world. After an encounter with a monster she pushed the fae out of her life and kind of blocked them out to a point to where she could no longer see them. That's until she is a teenager and her mother is kidnapped by a dryad who basically tells Charlotte that her family comes from a long line of shrine keepers whose job is to protect the shrine of the fae and keep their magic within their world. And 
the shrine has these fairy stones that the human world has kidnapped and taken and the dryad tasks Charlotte with finding the stones in her world and returning them and once she does that they will return her mother. I gave this a 4.25 out of 5 stars. This was a super fun read. I enjoyed all the different types of fairies that you get to see. Natalia did a really good job of putting in different types of fae more than what you would typically see in a regular YA novel. I enjoyed Natalia's writing and she definitely excelled in the world building department. This was just a really fun enjoyable read and with the ending that it had I'm kind of hoping that there's a prequel novel to this in the works at some point in the future. Next was one of my TBR box picks for the month and that is Avalon High by Meg Cabot. This book is about Ellie who is a high school student who has moved to a new high school called Avalon High. Her parents are medieval professors and they have kind of always instilled in her all of these Arthurian legends and once Ellie starts at the new school she can kind of see where the Arthurian legends and her real world are starting to blend. A bunch of weird things start to happen and it just kind of becomes a really interesting story from there. I gave this a 4.25 out of 5 stars. I watched the Disney Channel movie Avalon High prior to reading the book which I love the movie because I love Britt Robertson. She's fun. What I liked was the dark family drama that you don't get to see in the, t in the movie but in the book it is so good. There's some dark family drama that is wonderful. I liked the plot. I liked the characters. I liked that it had a different ending than the movie, which means I liked that the movie had a different ending than the book. Um, just, I, I already knew that it was a different ending and I was already spoiled for the ending, but I really just liked the way that this was written and again it was a really fun read. What the Dead Want by Nora Olson. I read this for the Buzzwordathon and I will link my vlog for the Buzzwordathon in the description box below as well as in the cards if you're interested in watching that. This book follows 16 year old Gretchen whose mother vanished several years prior and her mother's only other living relative, her great aunt, calls Gretchen and basically asks her to come to the old family home because it's her time to inherit it. Gretchen has always been interested in photography and it was something that her mother was interested in as well. Sort of the death portraits of the Victorian era where people would a lot of times take pictures where they would find a way to kind of make it look like there were ghosts in the photos or perhaps actually catching ghosts in photos. And Gretchen goes to the house. The house is falling apart. It's ramshackle. It's full of rodents. And seemingly the only thing holding the house up is the ghosts that inhabit it. Gretchen has to figure out why she can see the ghosts and why the ghosts seem to be exacting revenge on the entire town and also discover if it has anything to do with her mother's disappearance. I gave this a 4.25 out of 5 stars. This book was not what I was expecting. It was definitely spooky but it was a lot harder of a read than I was expecting. It had a murder mystery type vibe, but it was also heavily set in a world of racism that existed in the Civil War era and today. It does have some mixed media elements. It has photographs, flyers, letters, news articles, etc. There were just so many dark elements of what humans are capable of doing to one another with any idea of prejudice or racism involved. I cried. I loved the message that this sent um, towards the ends of toward the end of the book and I really liked the way that it concluded. Not a fun read but an enjoyable one nonetheless. And the final book that I read in the month of March and also the highest rated was Shiver by Maggie Steve Otter. This book follows teenage Grace who has always been fascinated by the wolves that live in the woods behind her house and a teenage Sam who lives kind of in two worlds and prefers one over the other. This book follows Sam and Grace as winter looms nearer and threatens to pull the two of them apart forever. I gave this a 4.25 out of 5 stars. Why am I 10 years behind on this? Why did no one tell me I would enjoy this so much? It had YA tropes. It's from 2009. Of course it had YA tropes, but I loved it. The characters were flawed and realistic. I enjoyed the plot. I enjoyed the writing style and I will definitely be adding more Steve Otter to my collection. I do have the other three books in this series and I will hopefully be reading them soon because I loved this book 
way more than I had expected, which is probably why it sat there for so long, because I don't, I don't know, like I just, I've had this, I looked, I bought these in 2015, so I've had them for four years. They've been out for ten. Why did I wait so long to read this? So those are the books that I read and or unhauled in the month of March. Let me know in the comments below what books you read this month and let me know how you feel about these books that I unhauled and if you've read any of these and you would like to discuss them down below that's the place to go. That is all I have for today. I post reading, writing, and book related videos on Mondays and Wednesdays and bonus videos on the weekend. So until then I will see you guys next time. Bye!